So here we are on our second break. Um, I'm sitting at uh, 54,000. Um, it was pretty tough. Um, I kept getting second best hands. Um, I had one revi. Um, I had pocket fives, flop to set, uh, ace, queen, uh, clubs suited, went runner, runner, uh, flush. So here we go. A little bit of revi, but you know what? It's not so bad. Um, after the break, we'll have the uh, breakdown for how much the prize pool is, and we'll see if we can run it up. Let's go! Man, just in case you're wondering, this is part two of our Salute to Service tournament where we make a run to the final table. We'll have all the details coming up for you in just a bit, so you'll want to stick around for that. Man, if you're interested in how we got to this point, take a look at part one. You'll find it over here. Oh yeah, and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button to the show so that you can keep up with all of our poker shenanigans, like what you see in this next hand. We're on the last hand of this level, and I finally get to see the payout scroll on the board, then realize that we already have a couple of limpers into the pot, so I quickly toss out a call and chip before I realize I'm only holding on to queen six offsuit. Ugh, call. Small blind completes, big blind checks his option, then we go five ways to a flop, which is pretty promising. Queen of clubs, three of hearts, two of diamonds. I hit top pair with a really bad kicker. Both lines check and our middle position player, Mike, we chatted with him earlier in the day. He tries to pitch his hand into the middle but quickly gets his hand slapped by the dealer because he's not supposed to play that way in a tournament. Looks kind of confused then reluctantly checks which prompts our villain in the low jack position to lead out for 4K. Ah. Now, I'm pretty sure this is some sort of squeeze play, so I smooth call that bet with my top pair. Pretty sure it's the best hand at this point. Guess we'll find out soon enough. Both blinds fold, and we are now heads up to the turn, which comes the Jack of Spades. Our villain quickly checks. I bet 10K into the pot, knowing that I'm about to pull these chips in. So he Hollywoods a bit, and then reveals he released middle pair. Disciplined, very disciplined. Yeah. A lot of people can't vote that. Nearly this entire level has gone by testing my patience because I haven't found a single playable hand until I find pocket sixes. And since this is the best hand I've seen in a bit, my brain wants to treat them like aces, so I decide to raise it up to 6,500, which prompted our big blind player to wonder if this was perhaps a steal. So he makes the call. Now, I'm not sure what he's calling with, but given the action I've seen him in thus far, my intuition is telling me he either has a small to middling pocket pair, maybe a couple of face cards, or perhaps it's just a pure defend. Whatever the case, my mind is made up here. If I'm to win this pot and take charge of my game, I'm going to need to deploy a solid C-bet no matter what the flop brings. Well, the dealer puts out this flop of ace-10-king rainbow, and I zone in on our big blind player as he checks. And knowing this board texture favors my hand more than his, I decide to go for it and execute what I decided to do moments ago and announce my bet of 10k. Good news comes in the form of a facial grimace from our big blind, as I suspect he's now convinced himself that I'm holding on to at least ace-king or some other hand that beats his. Whatever the thoughts that are brewing in this fella's mind, I find great comfort knowing that he's about to fold to a well-executed bluff. Yay me! All right, uh, quick table breakdown. So I really right. screwed up. I had ace eight and I just limped in. And then we had one, two, three more limpers. And then my man down there, he shoved ace eight. Good job him. So, you know, next time, next time, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna hit it. I know, bring it, right? <laughs> You know, sometimes you have to sit back and root for your friends to win in these tournaments, especially if you happen to be the last two ladies standing. Toss them over there, baby girl. Good job. Good job. Hold, 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 hold. Hold, hold, hold. There you go. Nice, nice. Oop. Whee! And while the dealer gets her chips all sorted out, I give a playful little phrase to my neighbor over here. I love you, man. <laughs> Squeeze Leo. Would have made more sense if she were sure. So I guess she was feeling pretty lucky because by the time we got to the end of this hand, she had called me down holding on to pocket fives whilst I had pocket tens. But the way she was playing, any bet she would have made would have tossed me out of the hand. Here's the run out. 
Okay. Okay. I check. Uh, check. You win. Oh. Ten. Oh, oh. Wow. wow. And as that saying goes, sometimes you're the windshield and sometimes you're the bug. We're now a couple hours into this tournament. Blinds are at $2,000, $4,000 with a $2,000 ante. I'm on the button looking down at one of my favorite hands. It's the King Nine of Hearts. Now our buddy, Marine Mike, he's in middle position. He decides to limp in for 4K. Folds go around to me. I smooth call, of course. Small blind folds, big blind checks his option, and we go three ways to a flop, which comes 399, a couple of spades. Yep, I got top set and a pretty strong kicker. The big blind decides to check, as does Marine Mike, so I decide to lead out for 10K just to start building a pot. That way, if I do get raised, I've got a pretty good idea how to proceed should another spade hit the board. And whilst we're discussing the possibility of cracking open this awesome bottle of bourbon that I just won in a 50-50 raffle, we're trying to raise money for taps here, our big blind folds and Marine Mike, eh, he decides to call. The turn comes in a central brick. It's the seven of hearts. But this time, Mike leads out for 10K. Well, it doesn't make any sense to me as this card really doesn't connect with anything out there unless Mike was floating pocket sevens, and I'm not worried about that. He could be holding pocket threes for a flop full house, but I'm fairly confident that Mike would have raised my 10K bet on the flop. So based on what he shared with us earlier in the day that he doesn't really play a lot of poker, my hunch is he's a bluffing in this spot. So I make the okie dokie call. Man on the river, Mike makes a futile delayed sea bet of 10K once again. So I decide to pounce on his bet like a cat to a yarn ball and raise to 50K, knowing full well that I'm about to collect this pot. Well, I guess that's why I tried to psych him out by grabbing my cards here to show strength, because sometimes when people do that, they're really bluffing. I don't think Mike really caught on to any of that, because he mucks his hand and I scoop in the pot. Easy game. All right, then. Now, we're going to go ahead and fast forward a little bit here so we get to be six-handed, looming ever closer to that inevitable final table. And in this hand, I'm looking down at Ace-Jack suited in middle position, so I make a pre-flop raise to 60K. Our villain just to my left, he makes the fold when our Air Force vet, she likes what she sees, and she's been on such a huge heater over the past few rounds, she decided to ride that wave and makes a call for what looks to be most of her stack. I'm not really sure why she didn't just shove here, but I'm guessing we're going to find out soon enough. Our button villain, he watches all of this action. Great anticipation. He shoves his stack in the middle for 117. Now, ordinarily, the move here would be for me to also go all in to isolate him. But I see my Air Force buddy over here getting herself ready for takeoff. <laughs> and given her stack doesn't really seem to complete this 117, my plan is to feign a little bit of weakness here, hoping to induce a shove from her so I can get all of the chips and have a double knockout. So what do you think? Will my sinister plan work and get us to a final table? Or <laughs> will I get pipped and end up with a short stack here? Well, let's take a vote. I'm going to pause the hand here, let you cast your votes in the comments section down below. Go ahead, we'll wait. How much more, I'm sorry? 57,000 more. Thanks for playing, because as you see, she indeed makes the call, and when the hands are tabled, we see that we're up against sixes and nines. I got a couple of overs, so step two here is to get the run out we need in order to score this double KO and get us even that closer to the final table. Let's give a listen to see how that all plays out. Alright, let's roll. <laughs> give me an ace or a jack. Or a king. Ace, jack, king. Yes! Broadway. And now that we've combined the two outer tables, we're still playing shorthanded as the live stream is going on with the feature table, we see that we're seated directly across from last year's runner-up, Big Slick Rick. He's accumulated a massive stack so far, and from the looks of things, he and I have been sharing the same run good. 
In this hand, we pick up the action as Big Slick Rick under the gun plus one had already limped in at 40k, as did the button, and I'm in the big blind holding on to Queen 10 off suit. I check my option, and we go three ways to the flop of Queen 10 7 Rainbow. <laughs> A monstrous flop for me. Big Slick Rick leads out for 100k, the button immediately folds, so I had no other choice but to go all in. That's when Big Slick Rick gives that speech. The only bad part about this, I think you're bluffing. But I can't call you bluff because there, I can't get any more steps from you. Hmm. You know what? I love you, baby. Yeah. I I fold my deck. Which brings us to our very last hand outside the live stream. I fold my crummy queen five offsuit, only to learn that. Oh, we final made a final table? Woohoo! Final table check. Taking this one down. Well, we're soon to find out. Oh, Victory Scar, you're coming back. The outside table, I was talking about the characters. I mean, we have Bandana Bob at the table. We got Marty Ball at the table. We got Wheelchair Dan at the table. We got, oh, boy. We, got we, we have a very entertaining final table right here no for a veteran kidding. swimming. And I said, yes. I enjoyed last year's and it was great, but yeah. this one has the makings of even be e even more entertaining. And, and by the way, some talented poker players. Yes. Oh, absolutely. And even with all the talent around me, I'm so very proud to have been the last woman standing for the tournament as I was able to come to the final table fourth in chips. Unfortunately, I really didn't have much to play until this hand, and I think I'll let Vic and Dom call the action from here on out. Big Slick Rick, will he raise here? King Ten of Hearts. Just a smooth call. And Rodney now. Longtime Toledo poker player. And he does make the call. Now Marty with Ace Queen of Hearts. Awesome hands right here, Vic. Multiple players. Big Slick Rick now. He needs 85 to complete, and he does make the call. Rodney oh, wow. makes the call. This is a dandy of a pre-flop pot brewing here, Vic. I believe that says, if I'm reading it correctly, 370K in the middle. Just a casual, what, 12 starting stacks plus? Yeah, Parker, this could be a sick hand. Let's see what happens. And we got a 6-7 deuce board, couple of clubs. And right now, ace-queen still in the lead. And advantage to the pre-flop aggressor, but she checks it. Oh, and the free card and Rick gets, gets the king on the free card, and a shot uh -oh. ball in from Marty. Oh, card too late. Do it on the flop, oh, not the turn. Oh, Marty, she, she, like you say, if she'd have done that on the flop. But really, it is 360. It's a pot-sized bet. Is Big Slick Rick put her on like ace-king? King Queen. Call. Oh, and he makes a call. Rodney throwing away an ace. Marty's going to be, oh, her, I think a one outer, maybe two. She's drawn two. Give me an ace, baby. Yep. See one call. Wow, what a pot. 1.2 million. And it blanks Marty. Great run, though. Wow. She got a couple good prizes. She made the money. <laughs> Good job, Marty. A bit of a punt? Maybe. Still, I had a great run up to this pivotal moment, and I can't wait to get back into the action. And if you've made it this far, please hit that like and subscribe button as it helps this channel get out to others just like you. As always, play smart, play with heart, and always have fun. This is Marty, and you've been watching Reflections of a River Rat.